Hello my soccer universe for the Europa and Europa Conference League review which will be interesting because I more or less saw only 8 games and today I couldn't watch the highlights because I was either busy or they showed them at impossible times. And yes, I mean like uh, yesterday evening I was not so concentrated as I'm usually at, at these uh, two competitions because uh, at the same time there was also the Women's World Cup qualifiers where Austria unfortunately lost in Scotland in overtime. And so they are not qualifying for the first time uh, for a World Cup, which kind of was a little bit of a downer. Um, for the first time, very conference team Fiorentina roared back. However, I think you saw it in the title. The biggest result is the Betis also got the job done in Rome, beating Roma, coming even back to uh, win a win against Roma, which I think was uh, probably the marquee game of all the ones we had there. In the Europa League, we also have another interesting group, the one where the uh, city rivals Lazio in their Feyenoord, Sturm Graz and Midtjylland, a completely level group. Um, we also had some trouble uh, surrounding Ronaldo because he seemingly cannot score anymore. I think his era is most decisively over. Uh, think about it, what uh, you may. And yeah, we also had, of course, Arsenal still rolling. Uh, we had a little... Well, trouble in Malmö between uh, Malmö and Union Berlin fans, which caused the game to be abandoned. And generally, the German team is doing well, except for Köln. And yes, they are very prominently here. But this this time, I put the Euro, uh, the Conference League teams here, which I have only five and four. And you know, Europa League, all oh, there's only one. Ger uh, not both German teams are, are there. But yeah, I usually should put Köln there, and even Austria Vienna getting another beatdown. Villarreal still very much the favorites. But yeah, I think we go through the uh, matches and from what I've seen, I can give you a little bit of uh, insight. We start in Nicosia where United actually controlled the first half most of the time, but still found themselves down at the half uh, through a goal by Ansari Fart. Uh, again, it was Ronaldo not uh, hitting the chances uh, and sometimes United wanted to be too cute. However, Ten Hag made some changes, brought on Rashford, uh, Rashford Paid off immediately, he got the equalizer, then he brought on Martial, who scored another one, then Rashford make it 3-1, and you think, yeah, the game is done and dusted. Uh, and the Rashford goal, the second one, was even assisted by Cristiano. However, then, almost immediately, Pan uh, Panjotu uh, pulls one back, and you really are thinking, ah, is United again throwing a game away that they never should have been in any doubt? No, they hang on and get a 3-2 win in the same group, uh, Real Sociedad, get to go second half goes through Silva and Elustondo 2-0 uh, win over Sheriff and as we'll see those two teams are the ones that will uh, dominate in this group. Um, the group F of the Europa League, Sturm Graz against Lazio. Sturm actually dominated the first half, just couldn't get the ball in. Uh, Lazio hang in, but the, the longer the game went on, the, the changes they had ever made, like with Zalcani, Lazzari, Vizzino coming on, uh, it suddenly got a little bit more, Lazio got the game more on, on the crawl. They even thought that they had scored a go-ahead goal through Immobile, which probably would have been a little bit a tough... Um, Tough for Sturm to be too honest because they really would uh, deserve to get something out there. Uh, it was disallowed for a really, really close offside, and then a minute within a minute, Gassi Begovic gets sent, sent off with a second. Yeah, Jigel so Sturm had to hang on, although I think the best chance fell actually to them at that point. Um, in the parallel game of that group, um, Feyenoord actually had a 2 0 halftime lead through Shimanski and Kokchu. However, Isaacson pulls two back from mid and the group stays level, as we'll see, all teams on four points. Freiburg is another game that I actually saw, uh, <laughs> or, you know, followed a little bit. Um, dominated against Nantes uh, and got the goals in the second half through Kire and Grifo, uh, going out 2-0 uh, winners. A uh, surprise to me was that Karabakh went then to Olympiakos and beat them 3-0. That was the result that I didn't expect at all. Similar to Javenas Vesta against Ferenc Varos. I couldn't potentially see it, but 4-1 seemed to be a little bit high. Uh, Monaco against Rapsonspor uh, didn't really have a problem. Yes, an 11th minute red card for Rapsonspor definitely helped there. Benyeda scoring two then before the half. Uh, C the 55th, and then basically everything uh, fizzled out. But Spakasetas pulling one back there for Trabzonspor. Uh, the early standout game, because it was on and goals all the time, 
uh, PSV just going to Zurich and completely taking Zurich apart. And this is now for Zurich without Franco Foto or, or, or already. Uh, it doesn't get much better for them to to Wales. We have Tess scoring the first two in the tenth and, and the fifteenth, and it was really whenever Zurich tried tried to attack, uh, PSV somehow cleared and then with superior speed just outplayed Zurich all the time. Kakpo also also getting to it and uh, Xavi Simons. Uh, the fourth one was 4 0 at the have a very little on Okita. Pulls one back, uh, but that was a definite beatdown. Uh, beatdown with the second string squad, also what Ajax did again. Uh, Ajax. <laughs> Ajax is not a great team anymore, as, as we know. Arsenal um, against Bode and Ketia getting two goals in the first half. Uh, no, getting one goal in the first in the first half, uh, hold and getting the other one, 23rd, 27th, and then Viera uh, making it a comfortable win. Arsenal can afford in this uh, comp, comp, comp competition to only play with the second string uh, squad. Uh, then the next one, Fenerbahce against Larnaca is kind of expected, although I have, I have to give it to the Cypriot teams. They're actually hanging on really well uh, in getting here, here, here in the other points. Um, Stadren beat Dynamo Kiev uh, with a late goal for, uh, by Due. But it has, has been said, Dinam Tirokiv is a, a hard to beat team, so a uh, very credible result. The other goals by Thierrier, who gave uh, Ren the lead, and Tsigankov uh, equalizing in the 33rd. Uh, a little bit of a surprising result that uh, uh, Helsinki on a 1 1 against uh, Rasgrad, Ludo Goretz, and then Roma against Betis. I kind of followed a little bit. Betis with their pleasing play had actually largely control in the first half however Roma can always hit you on the counter attack um, and they got a penalty that Dybala converts and you really thought that um, they will go through however a uh, really nice shot by Rodriguez just before the half uh, sets the game level then I really thought that Roma wants to take that game and uh, overwhelm Betis in a way However, this is a bet side that is not easily beaten, and that's exactly what proved to be. Uh, Rodrigo and Luis Enrique heads head heads it in the 88th minute, and then Saniol also gets a straight red card uh, for roughing laid on. Uh, it was not a Roma stay at, at all, and they are having a really tough time in this Europa League campaign. Having already lost to Ludo Goretz, now losing at home to Betis, it's an uphill struggle for the, as I said, defending uh, Conference League Snare Champions. Good news is, if you're in third place, you go back to the conference and maybe you can defend your title there. Let's see how it will uh, point out. The big story between Malmö and uh, Union were fortunately the um, the crowd trouble, where seemingly Malmö and Hertha Berlin fans have a, f a fan friendship. And so at one point there were Bengalos thrown uh, above or around the Union sector and, you know, people with... Um, uh, masked uh, masks there uh, it was not it was not comfortable watching uh, in many ways and in I think the game was suspended for 20 minutes uh, and under the strict uh, regulations that if something happens the game will be abandoned I don't know not I I, I don't want to uh, make now any uh, judgment of who it was that there was a trouble it was definitely around the Union Berlin fans that there was the, in the in around their sector where there was the trouble and as usual where the away fans are there's usually all the family sector which is one of the worst placements ever so I don't know this is something that has to be addressed um, as for the game uh, Union Berlin actually were the better team large large actually but they, they seemingly shot themselves in the foot when Andra Schäfer miscontrolled the ball uh, played it back in he, he, around San Sandler weirdly play play back and uh, an attacker from Malmö intercepted would have gone straight straight goal he's brought down straight red red card but with a man less uh, Geraldo Becker gets the winning goal the first win for Union Berlin and the first time that they score in this group stage uh, there and then also a shocker Braga who looked really really convincing so far uh, even the Porto except for this weekend we have not talked talk about that losing 4-1 to Porto was probably the first uh, thing you're not as good as, as you think you are uh, but this one was an odd one because they had the lead uh, really early on in the second half then Nielsen in the 86th gets an equalizer and then in stoppage time, deep into stoppage time, Nielsen also gets the winner for Union, so Angelo also take the top of the table in this group. So uh, if we look at, at the standings here and again, you see uh, to, to the right the performance bars in a way 
Arsenal and PSV, despite not having played each other, are already very well in control of their group. I think it will be those two teams coming out. And I said it at the draw already. These are two of the most highly rated teams that they are in the same group. It's a little bit of a travesty, to be honest. Um, Fenerbahce is now... Le um, Level with Ren uh, taking over of our goal difference. Remember, they played uh, a, a draw. Dynamo Kiev still winless, although I actually think they're a much better, better team than they're made out to be. Uh, Roma already in trouble, still favored over Ludogorets, but they will have to get a result in Bulgaria and hope that Ludogorets uh, drops some points. So I don't think this is as straightforward as it looks like. Betisto looking comfortable already not mathematically qualified already but uh it is really really hard to see them not quali qualified that's why the hundred percent um union essentially also ahead of braga and for union berlin the good news is now that they can probably with, with with the second win over malmö they could draw level with braga unless braga wins in union but uh that means that the group is over wide open so let's see uh, if there will be some more, um, you know, excitement in that group coming. Um, then the groups Real Sociedad and Manchester United, I don't see Sheriff or um, Omonia challenging there at all. And then we have the crazy group, all teams of four points. Yes, and it's then down to rating, of course, Sturm and uh, Midtjylland would not would be outsiders, but I wouldn't see it beyond them. I actually have a feeling that it will be one of those two that will make it in the no, no, and one of Feyenoord and Lazio will go to the conference. Um, I would though expect that Sturm Graz will finish last there, although I'm not really hoping for that, you know, just for Austrian points. Um, Freiburg fully in control of, of their group and Karabakh seems to be the better team than not in their kind of, you know, on one side surprising, on the other side, you know, uh, Karabakh have been in a challenge, I'm thinking that there's a lot of money behind them, so maybe it makes some sense. And then uh, Ferenc Varos, despite being so heavily beaten, uh, still top of their group. So a rather odd group that one as well. Um, as for the favorites in the Europa League, we have Arsenal ahead of Betis. Sounds about right. Those seem to be the strongest teams. Freiburg can go get in there. Real Sociedad, maybe Manchester United. But you know, you also see the few teams from the Champions League dropping. And there's always something. We have here the Ajax, the Barcelona, the Juventus uh, that come in there. And most importantly of all, Sevilla and the new, new coach. Maybe the coach wants to prove himself and win a Europa League for Sevilla because that's what you do when you're a new Sevilla coach. The next matches are basically the reverse fixtures. Um, again, I think Betis Roma is the marquee fig fixture, it's an outstanding fixture, uh, but you see already the Union saint Julius, uh, Braga, uh, that has quite some weight behind it. And then uh, if I look at everything in the Feyenoord Lazio group, will have weight, not Fre Freiburg, also, so there is some interest in the game, but I think everything pales a little bit in comparison to have uh, the Spanish Cup winners play the Europa Conference League winners, despite it being already an away win. Over in the Conference League, Fiorentina hit back big with a 3-0 win at Hearts. That was sorely needed for them because they had a really really bad start to their campaign um being outdone uh away from by, uh by Bashakshi here and also only managing a 1-1 against rfs 3-0 gets them back on track mantragora kwame scoring in the first half and then with a man more jovic even adds a third one um but actually rfs only a nil nil draw which actually shows that rfs from latvia is actually not a bad team west ham uh have to battle harder on the like you know belgian opposition is not easy opposition at all i think they would be right up there with the you know with the second tier leagues that i'm covering and i think the belgian league is, is, is a better league than the austrian league unfortunately skamaka getting the goal after the paqueta as uh, uh, so big win for west ham there as well um silkeborg 5 0 was was is a result uh lech posen is much better than i expected to be nil nil against hapwell beersheva and Villarreal real just had a filter with austria vienna uh Baena 
brilliant goal. Uh, I mean, he takes it out of the end directly, volleys it in. A wonderful goal in the 18th minute. Um, however, in between Austria, when I once hit the uh, world work, had, had some chances. I mean, if they can equalize there, the game might go different. But as soon as Danjuma makes it 2-0, there was only one way this going. And laid on, it got really ugly with Morales scoring a hat-trick. Austria, Vienna, it, they have to... They are learning a lot. Let's let, let, let's put it that way. But it's not an easy group for uh, them. Uh, nice winning at Slovatsko. Uh, Kern losing with a second strike squad uh, to um, Par Partizan Markovic scoring a goal. They were pressing then late for an equalizer, but it never came. Uh, and Partizan Kukulov also made it 2 0 at one point. But yeah, a little bit disappointed. But I think Kern is definitely uh, focusing more on the Bundesliga. Uh, to maybe qualify for Europe again. I think this, this is because they, they are in financial trouble. They definitely would need uh, the money. Now, uh, on the second page, as I said, it's always the lower groups are not so interesting, but there are two outstanding results in there. The first one is Vaduz getting a 2-2 two -two draw at Dnipro, having him a 2-1 lead early in the second half. Uh, however, uh, Pichal Janok uh, gets then an equalize in the 78th minute, but it's already the second point for Vaduz. Pretty good. Uh, another hard, hard fought win uh, over a super team was uh, for AZ. But I think it definitely the one result of six is Balkani 3 4 over Sivaspor. Uh, it was 1 0 for Sivaspor early on, then it's uh, the turnaround 2 1 for Balkani. They had a 3 1 lead. Um, Sivaspor equalized in the 94th first minute and then in the 94th, Klasnici gets the win for Balkan, which I think uh, uh, there is their first European win. Also, your Gardens winning at Ghent was also a little bit of a surprise result. Similar to Cluj winning at Slavia. That I did not expect as well, because I think Slavia usually should, should be a really good squad. And then the other surprising result is that Basel lose at home to Slovan and Bratislava also won. That was not expected uh, this way. Uh, overall, uh, the standings here, again, uh, Bershakji and Fiorentina are now uh, the two teams that are moving out of their group, but uh, still a little bit to play. And as I said, our RFS is a, a tough cookie to crack. West Ham should cruise through. I mean, uh, mathematically, they are not yet qualified, but uh, really, really, they are already qualified for next round. As is Villarreal, who are the class of their, their group, and it's probably between Lech Poznan and uh, Apel Bersheva who will move on. I think a very interesting group is Group D. Uh, Slovatsko actually played not that, that badly, only one, but it's probably too little. Uh, Partizan, Nice and Kern. Uh, it's a three-way battle of who moves on, uh, and uh, Slovatsko is definitely not out of it yet, although they're the lowest rate, rated team in there. Uh, AZ also more or less qualified over the, uh, the Dnipro. I, I wonder if Vaduz can get anything from there. Uh, and Gent suddenly uh, finds him only in third spot, and Jurgaard with seven points there. I uh, remember they had this uh, a v wild win over Molde, so that's also a relatively interesting group. Slavia and Cluj are on the bottom, but it's the same group as we had the Group F in the Europa League. It's the Group G, all that at four points, wide open, and even all the um, goal differences uh, with zero. So it's basically if you've scored more goals, you're on, you're on top. So that makes it really, really interesting. Uh, very uh, interesting group uh, just from the way this is all set. And Basel, despite the loss, are still ahead in their group, but you know, still uh, not secured, but they look like the favorites going through. Speaking of favorites, Villarreal still overwhelming, but West Ham is coming up as well. AZ has a word to play, but similar as for the Europa League, where Champions League teams are coming in, there are some Europa League teams coming, like Union Berlin, uh, not, but you know, uh, you actually would look at Roma, because they probably would take it more seriously, but uh, it's not such a big step. Um, still, the Europa League teams, uh, uh, the Conference League teams are more pro prominent in the ranking of the favorites there. Uh, upcoming games, again, the reverse fig, fig fixtures. Um, uh, Pick yours. I think anything partisan current is probably a really interesting one on on the first page. As is West Ham against Ander Anderlecht, although Anderlecht will uh, probably go down there as well. And then again, uh, the, the Cluj Slavia group is just a crazy one that needs to be a little bit unlocked as well. So yeah, that was it from me. I haven't seen that much and still 20 minute video sounds good. Please let me know anything that you want to add in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.
Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.